In this video, we are going to solve an exercise on hydrostatics. And even though hydrostatics is central to this problem, you will need to use your knowledge on kinematics in order to get the right solution. And generally, this is good practice to do these exercises where you need to combine your knowledge on different subjects within physics. This makes you more able to solve real life problems. In this case, we have a tank filled with water, which is resting on the ground and which has a hole at a specific height above the ground. Now, as you can imagine, water will escape through this hole in this nice stream and it will land on the ground at a specific distance from our tank. And at this point, you probably already see the question coming. Can you determine at which distance from our tank the water will hit the ground? Let's call this distance capital D. Now, intuitively, the distance, of course, will be determined by the velocity with which the water will leave the tank. We will call this velocity V. And if we know this velocity, then this entire part will simply be a kinematics problem. And that's why you need your knowledge on kinematics. However, also intuitively, we know that this V, this velocity, will be determined by the amount of water which is above this hole. Because if there's more water above the hole, the pressure will be larger and therefore more force. And more force means more velocity. Let's make this intuition more quantifiable. If we define our z-axis in the vertical direction, then we can say that the hole is at a distance z1 above the ground and the surface of the water is at a distance z2 above the ground. And now it will be the difference between z1 and z2, which will determine our velocity v, which in turn will determine the distance that we are looking for. So now that we have an intuitive feeling of the mechanics of this problem and how these quantities fit together, let's actually solve the problem by using equations. And we start by using the hydrostatics equation that links the pressure with the velocity, which is of course Bernoulli's equation. As a reminder, this equation is often used to link pressure with velocity. And it does so by considering the energy of the fluid at two different points. In our case, the points that we're interested in and thus need to compare is at first the point at the hole where the water leaves the tank and at which point we need our velocity. And the other point which we are going to compare with is oftentimes at the surface of the fluid. And this time is no different. So we're going to compare it at a height set to above the surface where the water meets the air. So we can write down Bernoulli's equation. For the first point, we have that the P atmosphere, so the pressure of the atmosphere, which is the background pressure of our problem, plus the potential energy term, which is simply the density of the liquid, times the gravitational constant, times the height of this point above the ground. In this case, it is, of course, Z1, the height of the hole. Then we add to this our kinematics term, one half times the rho, the density of the liquid, times our velocity squared. And now we are done for our first point. And Bernoulli's equation says that this is equal to the same terms for our other point, in this case, at the surface of the liquid. Here we again have the atmospheric pressure as our background, plus rho times g times z2, because we are at a height z2 above the ground, plus our kinetic term, which is one half times rho times v squared. So now that we have our equation, we can solve it for the velocity that we're looking for, namely this v right here, the velocity at the red point, which is the velocity with which the water leaves the tank. However, before we start rewriting this equation all around, we can of course make our life easier by first dropping some terms. We see that this p atmosphere occurs at both sides of the equality sign, so it can be dropped. We can also make the approximation that the velocity at the surface of the water is very, very small. And this approximation is more valid when the area of the surface of our liquid is much, much larger than the area of our hole. And this makes sense because if our hole is much smaller, then less water will leave the tank and the velocity with which the surface drops will be very small. So let's say that this is the case and we can drop this velocity so we can drop this entire kinetic term. And the only thing that is remaining are these three terms, this one, this one, and this one. So let's clean this up a bit. And now we have an equation that is much more manageable. Again, we need to rewrite this equation such that we get this V right here. So we can rewrite it and we get that V squared is equal to two times G 
times the difference in height, which will be z2 minus z1. This is simply rewriting this first equation right here. Now we see that we still have this squared in our velocity, so we can just take the square root on both sides of the equality sign. And we eventually get that v, the velocity with which the water leaves the tank, is equal to the square root of 2 times g times z2 minus z1. And one thing that you can notice about this formula, which is quite interesting and we will come back to later, is that the velocity depends on the gravitational constant of the planet you're working on. And this again makes intuitive sense, because if there is a much larger gravitational constant, this means that all this water above the hole will be pulled towards the ground with a much larger force. This means that the pressure here will be much larger and the force on this water as well. Therefore, our velocity will increase. So the velocity with which the water leaves the hole will be much larger on Earth than, for example, on the Moon. So now that we have linked the velocity that we need with the differences in height, we can go to the second part of our problem, which is the kinematics part. Here we are simply interested, and for this part, we are only interested in this section of our system, where the water leaves the hole with a velocity v, and we need to determine where it hits the ground. And we can copy it right here, and remembering of course that this distance above the ground is our z1. And again, to reiterate, we can look at it as a very simple kinematics problem, where a piece of water right here with a velocity v, and under the influence of gravity pulling down, hits the ground at some place, which we need to determine, d. And this is of course a two-dimensional kinematics problem. Let's first define our y and x axis in the most convenient way possible which in this case would be the y in the vertical direction and x in the horizontal direction. And doing this, we can very easily start our kinematics problem by using the base formulas for kinematics, which is basically the same formula in the x and the y direction. We have x after some time t is equal to an x0, a starting x, plus v0 in the x direction multiplied by t plus one half times an acceleration in the x direction times t squared. And the same can be done in the y direction. So we have y after a time t is y0 plus v0 in the y direction multiplied by t plus one half times an acceleration in the y direction times t squared. And this is a set of equations which means that both need to be true simultaneously. Of course, as in most kinematic problems, we can simplify this quite a bit. In the x direction, we can say that the zero point is where the particle starts, so x zero can be dropped. Also, we know that in the x direction, there is no acceleration, there is no force acting on the particle, so also this term can be dropped in the x equation. We do, of course, have a starting velocity in the x direction, which is, of course, the velocity that we found, which is the velocity v right here. Now in the y direction, we do not have a starting velocity, so this term can simply be dropped. We do, however, have a y0, a starting height above the ground, and in this case, this simply is z1. We also know that there is an acceleration in the y direction, which is due to gravity in this case, which can be written as minus g. And now we can rewrite our equations in their simplified form. We have x of t, is equal to v times t, just a linear motion. In the y direction we have y of t is equal to z1, our initial height, minus one half times the gravitational constant times t squared. And it is a set of two equations. And at this point we need of course to start thinking how we will get this capital D, the distance between where the water hits the ground and our water tank, out of these two equations. Because this capital D is in the x direction, we will need to look at the first equation, where x of t is equal to v times t. Now when will this x of t be equal to capital D? And the only variable in this equation is this t right here, which is the time that has elapsed. Now the question becomes, what specific time t do we need such that this x is equal to our capital D? Well, this capital D is defined 
when the water hits the ground. So when y is equal to zero. Therefore, we need to find t when y of t is equal to zero. And y of t equals to zero will point us to the second equation, the equation for y. So we need to find this t when y of t is equal to zero. And this gives us a first equation which we can really use. We have that zero is equal to z1, our initial position in the y direction, minus one over two times g times t squared. Of course, we're interested in this t here, so let's rewrite this equation such that we have t isolated on one side. We find that t is equal to the square root of two times z1 divided by g. And it's exactly this t that we can now fill in in our first formula in order to find an expression for d. Just simply fill in this expression that we found for t in this formula. And this gives us the following that d is equal to our velocity v, or our initial velocity, multiplied by this formula that we found here, multiplied by t. So multiplied by the square root of 2 times z1 divided by g. And at this point we are of course not done yet, because we need to take it home. In the first part of the exercise, before, we found a formula for v, namely this square root right here which we can now fill in in our formula that we have right now. So we can fill in this v. So this means that this becomes equal to the square root of two times g times the difference z2 minus z1 multiplied by this other square root, the square root of two times z1 divided by g. And this gives us a final solution, namely that d is equal to it will be a square root, so the square root of this 2 and this 2 multiplied to become 4. So we have 4 multiplied by this factor multiplied with this z1. So we have z1 multiplied by z2 minus z1, the difference in height between the surface of the liquid and where the hole is situated. And we can close the square root right here because we see that this g, this gravitational constant, cancels out. And it is actually very interesting that they cancel out, because if we remind ourselves for the formula for our velocity, we saw that it did have a g, meaning that if there's more gravity, this velocity will be larger. However, we see now that this distance right here does not depend on the gravitational constant of the place where we're doing the experiment. And this actually makes quite a lot of sense again because remind ourselves that g also appears in this part of the problem, namely the kinematics part, because the larger g is, the sooner this object will hit the ground, because there's more gravity pulling on the object. So even though a larger g will increase this velocity, it will decrease the distance at which the water hits the ground. And these two effects will cancel each other out perfectly, which is exactly what we see in this multiplication of these two square roots. And this is our final formula for the distance at which the water will hit the ground. And if you made it all the way to the end, you can be very proud of yourself. If you learned something, give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more in the future, consider subscribing. And I will see you in the next one.